Hello guys, I'm really really excited about today's video. Let me give you a backstory. While I was editing the part 2 of the last video I did, part of the series on storytelling where I intend to explain and break down all the different elements of storytelling, someone dropped a comment on that same video asking if I could show a real example of crafting a story or a real example of a short story on an editing timeline. It occurred to me that I could use the footage I captured with my DJI Pocket 3 on my last trip to London a few days ago where I just walked through the streets capturing random footage and I could use that to show how I craft a story as an example to creators out there about how no matter the type of gear you use the most important thing is storytelling and with whatever you capture, you can find a way to craft a story. So I developed this story using the story arc structure or the story arc that I introduced in my last video. That talks about an introduction or a background, a rising action or crisis, and then the climax and a resolution. And if you watch this video carefully, I'm going to put the different sections in as titles on the video just to show you the structure. And at the end of the short story, I would explain how I developed this story and explain the various elements of the story so that hopefully it gives you an idea of how to add storytelling or how to use the elements of storytelling in your content creation and your videos, whether on YouTube or whatever. So stay tuned, make sure you watch to the end and I'll see you at the end of the video. Stepping out of the University of Westminster with my DJI Pocket 3 in hand, I couldn't help but feel a familiar knot of anxiety tighten in my chest. I've always felt a little self-conscious taking photos or videos in public, especially in busy cities like London. As much as I love capturing life as it happens, you know, those candid street scenes, the expressions, the unique pace of each place. I usually find myself fighting the urge to tuck my camera away, just to blend into the crowd. But today, something about the streets was calling to me. I knew that with the Pocket 3 in my hand, I had a tool that was small enough to go unnoticed, yet powerful enough to capture the essence of this city. As I started my walk towards Victoria Coach Station, I tried to focus on the camera in my hand, not the crowds of people moving past me. Each time I raised the Pocket 3, I imagined the eyes of strangers watching, even if, in reality, they were probably too busy with their own lives to care. My mind raced with all the usual worries. Will they think I'm intruding? Is someone going to confront me? The world spins around You're there is my mind But as I held the small camera close, keeping it discreetly at my side, I realized something. With this device, I could document without disruption. I could witness without intruding. The anxiety was still there, but quieter, like a distant home with every new scene I captured. The woman lost in her own world, reading on a bench. The musician playing softly for a few coins. The lady on the sidewalk begging for arms. The Uber Eats delivery guy on a bicycle, stopping to plot his course and navigate to his destination. The couple and the people in the restaurants having a meal and having conversations, a man and a woman stopping, looking to cross the road, a cyclist riding by, people stopping for a smoke break, people asking for directions, a police car parked by the side of the road,
With all of these things, I started to feel myself slipping into the moment, losing that self-consciousness. Halfway through my walk, I felt myself take a deep breath. It was one of those breaths that you don't realize you need until you're halfway through it. For the first time that day, I felt a calm excitement, a sense of freedom in being able to capture these little pieces of London without feeling the weight of the world's eyes on me. The Pocket 3 was my ticket to be both here and unseen. It allowed me to blend in, to follow my curiosity, to document stories in a way that felt natural and respectful. I started filming things I hadn't noticed before. The intricate details on the old buildings, the way the light hits the cobblestones, and even the reflections in the shop windows that created a sort of urban collage. London was alive, and through the lens, I was finally able to see it as an insider, not just as an observer. As I reached Victoria, I felt a quiet pride in what I had captured, not just on film, but in my own experience of the city. I was still me, someone who preferred to stay out of the spotlight to create without drawing too much attention. But with the Pocket 3, I had found a way to honor that part of myself while also fully embracing my passion. In a city as vast as London, I had managed to carve out my own quiet space to document life as it happened, anxiety and all. Looking down at my Pocket 3, I smiled. Today, I had conquered more than just a walk through London. I had found a way to pursue art my way. So guys, what do you think about the short story? Let me give you more of the backstory. When I went out to London with my DJI Pocket 3, I really didn't have anything in mind but to just use the opportunity of being in London to capture footage from the streets. And hopefully I was thinking I'll probably do a POV walk through London kind of video. Because as content creators, you never know when you might need some footage, right? So I was just in London, hey, it's a good opportunity to capture footage. When I saw that comment on my last video, I thought rather than just put them all in a timeline and just share and just title it POV walk through London, like many other videos out there on YouTube, why don't I introduce the storytelling element or try to craft a story out of it? And so that's what I did. This was the process I used. I thought, what kind of story can I tell from this footage? Now, the first thing that came to mind was that I remember I talked about a storytelling checklist in my last video. I said, you start with the why, and then you go to the audience. You have to have like a key message. You have to introduce some emotional element into it. And you have to have a character and so on and so forth. Go watch the video. So I thought, let's start with the why. Why do I want to create this story? Apart from the reason, of course, that I wanted to use it to further illustrate the power of storytelling. I thought, okay, let me think of a problem, a challenge I have and use that. And I thought one of the challenges I have is that I'm, I think I'm a little bit too self-conscious and a little bit too uncomfortable doing street photography and street videography. I feel like I would rather just be a fly on the wall. I don't want to be so obvious, attracting attention to myself, walking around with the camera, taking videos and all of those things. So I thought that, okay, why don't I do a story about this challenge I have? Maybe there are other people out there who are like me. Because every time I see a photographer or videographer going out, capturing street photography and all of those things, I sometimes wonder how they do it. That confidence to stand with a camera in the street and take pictures of people. So. I thought, let me do a story about that, about my challenge with street photography and videography and how the Pocket 3 helps me because it's so tiny and discreet. And so I just drafted a short, basic structure of, of what I wanted to do, which is I want to tell a story about this and this and that. And then I went into ChatGPT and I started creating my story from there, putting in different prompts and I came out with a nice story that talked about the challenge I have with street photography. 
So the story starts with an introduction and in the introduction, what I'm trying to do is to introduce the problem, introduce myself as the character, the main subject and the problem I face, which is that I always feel a little too self-conscious or a little shy of bringing out my camera in the public and doing street photography or street videography. That's the background. Now, the rising action of the crisis is where I begin to walk through the streets of London on my way to Victoria Coach Station. In this part of the story, I'm trying to tell my audience the struggle I'm going through, which is that sometimes I feel like everybody's watching me. I feel like eyes are on me if I'm holding a camera, hoping that as I express this part of the story, maybe it, it resonates with the audience. And my audience in this case is people who also go through the same experience right as my primary audience i'm trying to reach out hopefully maybe somebody who watches it will say ah i can relate to that because i also feel the same way when i go out into the streets with my camera so i'm introducing that crisis element that challenge that emotional element hoping that somebody can resonate with the story talking about the anxiety i feel talking about the self-consciousness and talking about all of that now the next section of the story is the climax, which is where I come to a sudden realization that, hey, because I have the Pocket 3, everything seems pretty normal. And besides, people are not really so bothered about the fact that I'm filming with such a tiny camera. Maybe because it's a tiny camera, but now I feel like I can actually create my art without that self-consciousness. I'm now in the moment, I'm now in the zone, and the Pocket 3 allows me to be natural and to be inconspicuous and also at the same time respectful because I'm not in people's faces with cameras. I'm not making them feel uncomfortable because it's so tiny. Being with the Pocket 3 allows me to really, really get into the moment and film and capture scenes and capture people and all of those things. And the resolution part is that I now felt good. I could connect with the artists within me. I had finally found a way to overcome that barrier to doing street photography and street videography because I have this small device. And the small device could actually be an action camera, it could be a phone. So hopefully someone out there is not going to say, oh, I means I have to get the Pocket 3, but no, rather that with a small inconspicuous device, if you're that type of person who finds it difficult to film in public or shoot in public, if you go out with that small device, it could be like your phone or an action camera or the Pocket 3. If you are that type of person, you could still create your art. You could still connect with the artists within you. You could still capture those everyday scenes. So that's the flow of the story. That's the breakdown of the story. The introduction where I talk about myself and my problem, the problem I face, the rising action, which is that I'm actually going out today now to take a walk in the streets and I'm going to feel the familiar anxiety and all of that. And then the climax, which is that, hey, I'm shooting with the Pocket 3 and everything seems okay. It's not as bad as I thought. I'm now realizing that I have a way forward. There's a resolution. And then we get to the resolution, which is that I finally move to the next level, which is that I can confidently now go out to create with my Pocket 3. So that's how I broke the story down. And I'm hoping that, first of all, I hope you liked the video, right? I hope it was a good story. And I hope that this segment of the video where I explained it, you can see ways to craft your story. So as an example, if you are a vlogger, vlogging about your daily life, a day in the life, that kind of a thing, you can talk about a particular challenge you have and talk your audience through how you overcome that challenge or how you have not overcome the challenge, whichever the case may be. Or if you like to cycle, if you're a motorcyclist or you like to kayak or one, some other kind of hobby and you like to document it, you could put all those, all the footage you have of you engaging in your hobby and write a nice story about it. A good hack to writing stories is if you feel you're not that creative and you don't really know how to write, you could use ChatGPT, you could use AI. Hey, we live in the AI world. AI is, 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 is becoming a reality, it's becoming a part of our lives. And do like I did, which is come up with the basic concept, right? The story is going to be about this. Use the checklist I shared in the last video. The why. Why do you want to share the story? Or what's the purpose of the, of the story? Who is the character? Or what is the subject matter? All of those elements, you can just even put it into ChatGPT and say, using this checklist and this story arc structure, intro, the rising action, the climax, and the resolution, 
help me write a story about my last trip to Hawaii or help me write a story about my dog or my cat or help me write a story about how I ended up with this gear or equipment or help me write a story about a day in the life and then you begin to tweak it and tweak it and shorten it and simplify it and tweak it and once you finally get a good story you can do a voiceover because in this last video my voice was what carried you through right because I didn't have actors and it wasn't like a film or script a scripted film so you could use a voiceover to carry your audience through you could just use text if you're not confident speaking you could use text on the screen to write your story out or you could just use the visual elements to tell that story and at the end of the day that is how you can begin to use your gear whatever available gear you have and focus more on storytelling and create content that matters and create content that leaves people thinking or feeling something or learning something or smiling and if you're just like an entertainer you're not really that kind of person who likes to go deep into emotional things and philosophical things and all of those things and you just want to entertain you could just write a story that entertains people that makes people laugh if you are gifted in that area and you know how to make people laugh you can write a story that just makes people laugh i hope the video has been helpful i hope you enjoyed that story i enjoyed making it to be honest because i have lots and lots of that kind of footage right of my trips to several places and going out and cycling and I sometimes don't really know what to do with it. I don't want to just put it in a timeline and share a boring video. I really want something that I can look back at with pride and feel good and I want to create videos that I would love to watch myself. I'd love to make videos that years later I look back and I'll be like wow this is a nice story. So that is what drives me and I hope that's what drives you too as a content creator. So let me know what you think about this particular video. If it helped you to understand the concept of storytelling better if it helped you to know how to craft a story out of your footage and if you feel more confident about using your current equipment your current gear without having to break the bank or obsess over upgrading just using what you have to create nice short stories nice content that will help people and make an impact in the world in your world so yeah that's it thanks for watching the video please leave a like when you like the video it helps the algorithm to pick up my video and share it out to more people when you drop a comment i always like to read your comments i do my best to reply to every comment i learn from your comments as well and let me know what else you'd like me to talk about and um, most importantly do subscribe all right help me grow this channel let's grow this channel together all right guys go out there and be more do more have more See you in the next video.